Hi everyone, and welcome back to our YouTube channel, where as always, your hosts... Arne and Carlo. And we are back with episode 10 of our super fun uh, Christmas stocking along, or knit along, or whatever you want to call it. Where we're knitting a Christmas stocking in November, so that it can be ready to be stuffed with gifts in December. Yes, and we're here with our friends. Yes. Bob. Donnie, Susie, and Fran. They're behind us, the lovely little bullfinch, and you see the beautiful view, which is pretty much what we see out of our window in November mm. and December. Especially now when we renovated the kitchen, because we put in the bigger window facing the railway tracks. Yeah. And that's also where there's a lot of trees. Yep. And birds. Yes, and <laughs> in November, December, the bullfinches are there eating the food that we lay out. We have to put on snowshoes to get there. And once we get there, we do have to work hard to put the, the seeds up in the trees. But there's nothing as lovely as doing the dishes, um, looking, at the, looking at the birds and looking at a view. I mean, yeah. always place the sink in front of a window if you can. If you have a house and you can do that, it's fantastic. Yeah, why should you wash up looking into the wall? Exactly. I love washing my <laughs> dishes. Not. <laughs> we well, have a dishwasher for that. <laughs> yeah. But if we, you know, some things you do have to wash by hand and it's always lovely. And it's lovely to just have a sink in front of a window. We love it so much. So, anyway, this knit along is uh, going on. Um, this is the 10th day. So uh, today we will reveal the, ten, uh, the 10th the tenth clue, uh, which six, is an, yeah. another six rounds. And yesterday we did the sock. Oh, sorry, the heel. The heel, the scratch kind of. We the heel. We started it. Yeah. And we'll see what comes in today. Coming. It'll be very exciting. Uh, we've also got a lovely community of knitters um, that are posting comments every day uh, down below. And it is nice uh, to see that everybody is so um, enthusiastic about this. Yeah. And uh, we do encourage new beginners to ask questions. And we encourage everybody who has knitted, you know, tons of stockings and socks before to help out if they see a question. And we try to pop in as well um, from time to time. Um, unfortunately, we are really busy. November is a mm -hmm. horrible month for us. That's why this is pre-recorded. Exactly. So. And yesterday, and was it two days ago when we talked about the birds? We made fun of the names that it was like a pop group from the 60s or, or 70s. Yeah. And then we tied that up to the Eurovision yeah. Song Contest. And we were mentioning uh, groups like ABBA, who everybody knows. And then another, maybe lesser known, Bucks Fizz. Uh, they, I don't think they made their breakthrough in the US. I don't know. But they were very popular here in Europe, for sure. I have two vinyl records. Mm. One's like a, what they call single, yeah. one song on each side and an album. I know for sure. A good, <laughs> a good friend of ours, um, a New Yorker, um, her name was Rita. Mm -hmm. she, uh, she loved this song called I Like to Love by Tina Charles. Remember? Yeah. yeah I, My I, baby, I love he to loves love. to dance. Yeah. Yeah, they, yeah, uh, yeah. Something I like to love, and my baby, he loves, to dance. Like he loves to, to dance. I don't know. Anyway, that. I love that, to love. I, love, to I love. love, like to love. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> the baby that loves to dance, and he loves to dance. Anyway, it's we a song. We have that memory of a goldfish. It's the song by Tina Charles, and uh, it was popularized in North America when there was this TV show called River. Yeah. And she'd never heard of it. Um, she was at, in her 60s at the time, and she had never heard the song. And I said, Are you sure you've never heard it? She's from New York. No, no. And then we, we concluded that it must have been a hit in, in Europe, mm. but not in, um, in America. Not in America, because everybody in Europe knows this song. Yeah. I Love to Love, I think it's called. I Love but to Love. But my baby just want to dance. He loves to dance. He loves to dance. He loves to dance. Yeah. But I brought this out, this is vinyl, because I said that a lot of the songs back then were hits. And this is one of my first vinyl records. 20 Ori original, or original, original top hits volume two. And did you buy that with your pocket money that you earned? It was a, it was a Christmas gift. I got oh. it for Christmas. I got a record player and this one and a very bad Christmas record. From whom? A Swedish one. No, no, no. Who gave you the? Oh, gift? I don't remember. My parents probably. That's a lovely gift. Yeah. That's a really nice. My gift. brother got an accordion. <laughs> so first he played the accordion yeah. and then they wanted to listen to the Christmas music from Sweden and mm. then finally I got to listen to this one but then everybody had gone, gone to bed oh, yeah. <laughs> by the time I was playing this one. But you see this is on this one there's ABBA. They won the competition in 74. Mm -hmm. That's 50 years ago. Yeah. And then you have Tina. Tina 
Cross Your Heart, she sang for Ireland. Okay. And you have this one, Irene Cher. I don't know that one. Uh, bye Bye, I Love You, she sang. For, oh, I know that song. Yeah. For, from Lux she, she sang for Luxembourg. So. Yeah. And here's the Slade that I talked about. Slade. There are four people. Okay, yeah, yeah. And the New Seekers. They're good. And then you've got an Olivia Newton-John record as well. And Olivia, she was also in the same Eurovision Song Contest with Long Live Love. And this is the record, Long Live Love, with Olivia Newton-John. Did you get that as well at the time, or did you buy it later? I think I bought this later. Hmm. So we have a huge collection of Olivia Newton-John. Oh, it, well, it passed I, I, away I, I, last year, I think it was. No, no, I think it's a few years was ago. Was it a few years ago? Anyway, yeah, you uh, Two years, maybe. Yeah, a couple of years ago, I think. Yeah, we have a big collection, and now that we've been uh, tidying up and getting everything in order, Arne has a record player in his new studio as well. Yeah. Which uh, and these orange one with one loudspeaker. But it works. It works. Which is yeah. the main thing. Yeah. And yeah, we, you know, the clearing and cleaning and tidying up and trying to organize things is, I mean, we really are Marie kondo our house, I, I have to say. <laughs> yeah. And um, I keep telling Arne, uh, remember to put the things back after you use them and you won't have the problems of uh, layers and layers of things for the past 20 years. I mean, the things we've discovered, um, but I think the problem. clearing, clearing, I mean, this archaeological site that has been mm -hmm. Arne's studio, his old studio, has been incredible, and we have uncovered things there that and unfinished objects we didn't even know we had, and yeah. unfinished objects too. Yeah, and I think the problem is that we all, we have so much things to do all the time because we work with different things, and you work on one project and you never you before you finish the project, there's a new project mm. coming, and you have to start that project. So exactly. so we're working on like maybe five or six, maybe more, different projects all the time. So like, I, like, like now, I'm not sure how many projects we work on. We have oh, God, yeah. We're doing one, Christmas fabrics. We're doing collections for Rowan. We're doing collections. something for Regia. Regia. And we're doing something for our web shop. We're doing the, the, you know, the Christmas balls, this Christmas stuff. And a secret thing mm. we can't talk about. Lots yet. of secret things. And, and so, yeah, there's a, a lot of stuff mm. going on. And it's kind of hard to keep everything in order. It is, yes. Because uh, you put things down and then you put up another one and then you forget a little bit about the other one. Uh, but now I'm, I'm, I'm doing project bags. Mm. And I yeah, put, you're making, you're putting things in project bags. Yeah, and I, I go to the, you have the scale. So I weigh each ball of yarn and I write down on the paper and put that with a safety pin in the project bag okay. so I know how much <laughs> yarn I have in the bag and then when I need more I go to the storage house and I pick up another ball That's and I would put that on the on the scale so I kind of try to keep everything in order because mm. it's really hard to to focus on everything. Yeah, yeah it definitely is. So yeah. that's life. It is, yeah. By speaking of life and stuff, what, what, why, what's this, and why is it here? We've got wooden. Are you making uh, frames? No. For uh, something. What are these for? Could be frames. I did this last night. Yeah, but for what? It's an alternative Christmas tree. Oh. Remember? Like the one we saw in, um, in Hudson. The, yeah, we saw in, in this antique store in Hudson. So, yeah, now this I get will it. Be, this is like the top, and then this comes under, and yeah. we and, have different. And then it would be like kind of branches like that. No, no. It would be this way. There will be. This is the stem of the tree, and oh, it comes oh. down like this, and they go getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Oh. And it's going to be very homemade, like the one we saw, mm -hmm. because sometimes you cut out the wood, so. So these things, they go f nice together. So they're like on a line, like, what do you call, call that in English? You cut out half of the wood and you put them together. But I'm going to do it the way it was in the thrift store, mm -hmm. very homemade. So mm. this will be on top like Very this. cool. But I'm going to use uh, wooden wood pegs, uh, pegs mm. and glue. And I see you've written numbers on everything. Yeah, so the numbers are the centimeters on top. So mm -hmm. this one is 10 centimeter on top. And then I use that 45, is it 45 degrees? Yeah. Or something. Very nice, Arne. 
I can't wait to see the result, although I do know what it's going to look like because I do remember you the remember Christmas tree. It. We saw it in March. I'm going to do it a little bit different. Mm. Yeah, we saw it in March when we were visiting our friends yeah. in um, Saddle River. So this is a, my alternative Christmas tree. It doesn't shed <laughs> or That's good, it doesn't yeah. need water and you can use it year after year. Terrific. So Arne, we've got a... Um, We've got a Christmas stocking yep. to reveal. And as you all know, the pattern is free. All you need to go is go to arnecarlos.com and uh, pick the blog from the menu. Go there and you can download the six rows of today. And we will be doing this until November 25th. And the pattern will be free until December 1st, after which it will be be coming it will become a paid pattern i mean we can't say this enough the people no, really... we talk about 2024 yeah right and people really need to get it in their in their heads that it's only free until uh until december 1st um because otherwise you'll miss it and we don't want you to miss it that's why we keep mentioning this yes. anyway we've got exciting uh, rows and it's my turn to do the rum roll so drum roll oh, so here we go and this way because it's toe up. And you see, now this is mirrored. So we've got. And you see, this is like an or X and O's. Or rumps. And okay. This is the easy six, easy six rounds. There mm -hmm. are actually three rounds with only one color. And the rest is a walk in the park. Right. And this side has one row more than the other side because you've got the um, scrap yarn in yellow. But that's, that doesn't count. That doesn't count. But it does. And Arne, how about turning it around uh, so that people can see it in the camera? So this is the row, this is the row where we're going to put, or this is the side the heel. where we're going to put the heel that has the, uh, the invisible line in yellow. Because this so one more row than the others. Out later. And then if you turn it around, you'll see that the other side is the way it will be. Um, yeah. Yeah. So the heel comes out from this line. In the front, yeah. So then this one opens up. Exactly. So the rhombs will actually go kind of around the heel. On the heel? They on the heel side, you, they will top. split. Yeah. So you will have this over and under the heel. And yeah. on the front, you will have the whole thing. The whole thing, yeah. So um, a very clever way to knit a sock. I mean, really, uh, when we say it's the easiest sock in the world, we really mean it. It is super clever. Mm -hmm. Super easy. I think you get a really nice angle on your foot. You do, the yeah. On the foot. And it's perfect for Christmas stocking. Yeah. And you don't even need to do short rows and you don't need to turn a heel. And this is just uh, the best way for mm. any new beginner to do the, the heel. And so we, that's why we wanted to encourage yeah. many new beginners. And since we started on YouTube, I learned, that's when I learned after taught heel. Is that yeah. the word? After taught heel. But when, when I saw this when I was younger, it was a Russian heel. It's called a Russian heel, yeah. You know, mm. kind of, yeah. But I don't know, there can be many different But afterthought is uh, the way they because call it in English. Yeah. Yes, Sarna. So uh, this is the 10th uh, clue or 10th or uh, six rounds. So in theory, we've done 60 rounds, but actually we've done more because the toe had more. The toe had way more than six rounds, mm. but we really are uh, we really are getting there. We're not halfway yet, so no. there's still a lot to do and a lot of fun. And uh, I can't wait to see how this turns out or how the sock turns out. Uh, now that we're going to move upwards, the question is: Are there going to be more mashup of traditional patterns, or are we going to get a design um, something uh, pict pictorial, really something cool. that is not abstract? I don't know. Maybe we'll it see. will be more complicated though. For Maybe it will be more complicated. Because now that we've got you hooked, yeah. we can just reel you in now with our complicated. And now you're good. If you done, it, haven't done it before, you should be very good at yeah. all of it by now. And we've got this super fun competition going as well. Remember that we do want to see your progress as well. So make sure to tag all your um, all your uh, photographs with hashtag Arne Carlos on Facebook and on um, Instagram, and make sure to write here in the comments feel how you're doing and how much fun you're having if it's too easy if it's too difficult whatever you want to tell us we'd love to hear from you so uh let's go to the competition on it because the competition is going to be yeah i can't wait for that one as well to <laughs> pan out <laughs> so we've got a really cool competition running this year uh, where we will randomly select a lucky winner who will win uh, our latest uh, e-booklet that we have done for rowan 
uh, and enough of the Rowan Norwegian wool yarn to knit one of the sweaters from this uh, e-booklet in any size they want. Yeah, and the uh, inspiration for this collection is uh, Svalbard. So we have the husky sweater, we have the dog sledge, we have cables and we have polar bears. And the only thing you have to do is to answer this question. How many books have we published? Yep, that's the question uh, for this year. And uh, we want you to put the answer in the comments down below. It's a number we're looking for. And we're going to give you a little hint. Uh, Wikipedia is not um, a reliable source. Uh, so you may want to look elsewhere if you want to get the correct answer. Yeah. And uh, you can put the answer down preferably once uh, per day. Uh, during this knit along and that will increase uh, your chances but please do not put the answer more than once per day because then you will be ghosted by YouTube <laughs> and you do not want that to happen <laughs> so once a day is pretty much enough yeah. and uh, we will announce the lucky winner um, in December so this will be um, a fine Christmas well one person will get a really fine Christmas prezi from Arne and me in the post as yes. well so Remember to like and subscribe, and if you're a subscriber, put on that notification bell, because then you won't miss an episode. Yep, and make sure to interact with our content, as that really helps us here on YouTube. And uh, last but not least, uh, for additional content, uh, make sure to look at the uh, offer that we have for members. Uh, becoming a member means that you will get 15-minute uh, catch-ups with us every week. Uh, we do live streams where we offer our knitting help and expertise. We've got shenanigans in the kitchen and shenanigans well actually <laughs> shenanigans pretty much wherever we Everywhere. go um, and then there's fun uh, things like badges and emojis and other kind of content like that so um, if you want to become a member or if you want to consider it all you need to do is visit our channel at Arna Carlos go to the subscribe button and next to the subscribe button you've got a join button join uh, by clicking and then selecting your tier and uh, we look forward to uh, seeing you uh, for that additional content as well. And if not, it's perfectly okay. We look forward to seeing you here every day uh, for our knit along and then for our usual episodes on Sundays. Yes. Yeah. So. so thank you for watching and we will catch up with you very, very soon again. Bye. Bye.